In this example, we're going to look at the electric potential energy of uh, point charges on the corners of a triangle. So I give you the setup as shown. I have three point charges, plus Q, plus Q, and minus 3Q. They are on the three corners of an equilateral triangle, uh, side length L. And I ask, what is the total electric potential energy of the configuration below? Now, if there were just two point charges here, we know how to calculate the electric potential energy. It's just K, Q1, Q2 divided by the distance between them. However, we've got three point charges. So we need to use superposition somehow and add them up and it might get a little bit tricky. So if we try and think about this problem in a very organized way, maybe we can make the math a little bit more clear and a little bit more focused. So let's start by taking all of the point charges off the triangle and put them infinitely far away. Then I'm going to move the first point charge into the first spot on the triangle. Then I'm going to move the second. And then I'm going to move the third. But between each step, after I put the first point charge, uh, point charge on, after I put the second point charge on, and after I put the third point charge on, we're going to calculate the potential energy. So let's begin. I take the first point charge at infinity, and I move it to the very top of the triangle. Uh, there's no point charges around it, there's no electric field right now, it doesn't take any work to move it there, so the potential energy of this configuration is just zero right now. When I move the second point charge on, it interacts with the first point charge. So the potential energy is just equal to minus 3k q squared divided by L. That just comes from the expression k times the charge plus q times the charge minus 3q divided by the distance between them, L. And then finally, I'm going to move the third point charge onto the triangle. But the third point charge is going to interact with two point charges. So you'll notice the Q in the bottom right interacts with the Q at the top. That's the KQ squared over L. And then the Q in the bottom right interacts with the minus 3Q on the bottom left. That's the minus 3kq squared over L. And now I can just do a little bit of simplification, add those up, and I get minus 5kq squared over L. And you'll notice that I can keep adding point charges onto this configuration, as many as I wish, and for every new point charge I add on, I just figure out what its energy is compared with each of the existing point charges in the configuration. So, a uh, few final thoughts. We can construct the charge distribution piece by piece in order to determine the potential energy configuration. And that will help us keep everything organized and keep everything uh, straight and clear. Uh, second thing, remember energy is a scalar. So uh, when people do this problem, a lot of times they'll ask me, well, why aren't you drawing in your vectors and uh, taking into account direction and all that? And the answer is you don't need direction, right? Energy is a scalar, so you can just add them up as numbers, plus and minus numbers. And then finally, uh, take this a step further. Try this with a square, try this with a rectangle, maybe draw a different charge configuration and see if you can calculate the electric potential energy using the step-by-step -step method.